welcome to Pay It Forward. A couple of days ago I made this little felt brooch for myself and I thought perhaps you may all like to make it as well. I have some little pattern templates for you. You simply click on the link in the description below, download those, those free pattern templates and I'll show you how it's done. So let me show you the things we're going to need to make our little artist's brooch. First of all you're going to need your front and your back piece and I have cut those out with my heat and bond on the back. Now my reason for doing that is when you're cutting out tiny little uh, pieces like this, especially when it's isolated in the middle of a pattern piece, it can be quite tricky. So if we have heat and bond on the back, it means we get that, that paper. It means that drawing out our little very precise shapes uh, is much clearer than just drawing onto the, the fuzzy felt. So that's why I use the heat and bond. It just stabilizes that felt just a little bit more. Also remember when you're cutting out your tiny shapes, that middle section, of course, we just give it a little snip first and then we pop in there. And whenever you're cutting tiny shapes out, you want to go right up on the axis of your scissors and you want to start making your cut using the full length of the blade of your scissors. Same as when you're cutting around little shapes like this, Little tiny snips like this, snippy, 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 gives you a little jagged egg, edge. So what you want is right up on the axis of your scissors and use the full length of that blade every time. Open your scissors and all the way. That gives you a much smoother line. That's just a little cutting tip. And also when you are cutting out these little pieces, because the smaller the project, of course, the more noticeable any little flaws and, and faults are. So we want to keep our are cutting uh, very very precise so those two are cut out and then you'll need a filler for the inside of your little uh, brooch here now I'm using stiffened felt and I find that quite readily available in all of your craft stores if you haven't got any stiffened felt uh, I would suggest that you use a piece of felt that is interfaced with a very firm interfacing and that will give you a similar feel. But if you can get the stiffened felt, I use that a lot in making my little fabric jewelry and brooches and so on. You'll also need another little piece for applying your little pin on the back, which we have here. You need your little pin, of course. They're also available in your craft stores or online. I'm only using a tiny little one here. And of course, your little piece that slips, little piece of felt, it's just an ordinary piece of felt, um, that will vary uh, depending on what size your little pin is but you can see you just need a little rectangle of felt that will secure that little pin and you'll also need an assortment of buttons to uh, make our little our little paint splotches and I've I've used seven in this design varying sizes and obviously varying colors and you will need some clear craft and hobby glue something that dries very fairly quickly and you'll need an embroidery thread of, of some type. Now I'm using my favorite Gudeman top stitching thread. It's very strong and the thread stays nice and crisp right throughout the sewing and you need something that's quite fine for getting into that little tiny circle there. So our first step is to we're going to add our pin to our back piece which I have here and I've removed my, my paper and we're just going to be adding our little pin with some glue. We're just going to be adding a little pin in this section. I'll just make sure I get it right. Just a little bit of our clear craft glue on our little pin to start with. Just so that I'm not fiddling with it too much. Just a tiny bit to choose your position and I found the best position for this little brooch is on the top of this little side and we are gluing this one straight onto the right side of the felt because we won't be turning this little brooch through. So we're just going to press that one down and then we're going to add a little bit of a little bit of felt to sit over the top. We are going to make a couple of little rows of stitching to secure that one in place. Just 
flip that one through and press that down. I'm going to let that one dry just for a couple of minutes, it doesn't take long and we're going to take it to the machine and just sew a little row of stitching across there, preferably in, in a colour match thread and, and one across the top there and that, that way that's very very secure that little pin and we've kept it all nice and neat and tidy because it's nice to have it looking neat and tidy on the back as well. So I'm just going to go and stitch those two little, little lines in there. There my little pin is nice and secure in place there. We can just let that dry for a couple of minutes. Our next step is to add our little buttons at this stage because if we add them now we're going to have uh, all of our stitching will be hidden between the two layers. So we'll remove our backing paper and it's just a matter of working out your layout of what you like. I've obviously gone with the with the same sort of colours here and I've picked basically my primary colours, the nice brights like that. When you're choosing your little buttons, it doesn't matter if they're two hole or four hole, although I do prefer the two hole because there's, there's less interruption to the surface space so the little splodge of paint looks nice and solid. When you are choosing your buttons, shiny is best to give us the impression of the, the paint and you'll find that with a lot of little buttons they have a little a little indented recess side and if you flip them over they can often be quite nicely domed so I'm using in this case I'm using the back of the button showing just for a smoother effect and you can set them out any way that you like anything that uh, you think works and also keep your buttons different sizes little projects like this and just um, classically in art we don't want anything that is just same, 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 same. It's, it's very boring to look at. So, and also your positioning of your buttons, it's the same thing. Just try and shift them, move them so that they're not all exactly the same distance apart and so on. You can see there that some are closer, some are down here, some are closer to each other and some are more widely spread out. It's just more pleasing to the eye when you have that effect. So you can take a little felt marker and make your little spots to help you sew them on. When you're sewing your buttons on, very important in this little project that you match your thread to your button so that we're still keeping that overall, that the little white is all white, the little yellow is all yellow and so on. So once you're happy with that, you just sew your buttons on. I have one already done for this little project and you can see that in this case, I've got a bigger splodge of green here and, and a brighter pink and that's entirely up to you, your colouring. So our next step now is we go back to our little back section and we're going to take our filler and we're going to glue that one in place on the back. Just a little bit of glue to hold it in place. And as simple as these little brooches are, the construction is very, very important for the finished result. And it gives it a lovely professional finish by having that nice, that firm stabiliser inside. And it's just a matter of popping that one on. What we have to remember here is that we're going to be stitching around the outside and also that inside little circle there. And you can see that little template has left us just enough room to do that. So you just want to press that one into place. And then we're going to add the front in exactly the same way. So I'm going to add some glue to my front. Make sure you get those little edges and particularly around this little circle here because we really want that little section to be sealed nicely. just enough to coat it all and then it's just a matter of lining that all up beautifully and just take your time to set
settle that one into its right place, working around. Once it's all in position and you have it all lined up nicely, while you're pressing these little pieces together, the warmth of your fingers will start to dry that glue. So it's just a matter of going around, really filling up those edges, particularly this section here. And you can get your thumb and forefinger in there. You really want that little section there to be sealed as much as you can all the way around. Don't worry if there's a few little bits of glue on your outside edge because we can always trim that up. So once that's all pressed together, we're just going to let that dry for a few minutes. So my little brooch is dry and I'm going to start on my stitching. So I have threaded my needle with my extra strong uh, Gooderman top stitching thread and I'm using a dark brown because my my little uh, colouring here is, is the tan colour. I find that a darker colour works best on this little brooch. Um, it just really outlines it all and gives it a bit of dimension. So we start from behind and we're going to go in the back and we're going to sew the little circle first. So we come out, so I've dived in at the back there and I've come out between the two layers. I hope you can see that and just come out there. I've got a little knot in the end which I should be able to just pop through. You see that that's just popped through the felt there and it will be hidden within those layers. So now we're going to sew, it's a tiny little blanket stitch and, and I would even call it a buttonhole stitch. It's so tiny, but it's done in exactly the same way. I do have a video that shows you how to sew this stitch and it shows you in great detail, but I'm gonna show you some stitches here now. So we're going to start, now these stitches are really tiny, they're probably only two millimetres and so we're going to travel across two millimetres and down two millimetres and just going to pop in. Now we're going to go through both, both layers of the fabric and we're going to come out through our little hole and we're going to make sure that our thread, our little needle comes through the loop there which makes the little blanket stitch can be a little tricky because we're working with this this little inside section but there's enough room to get around there it's very important while we're doing this little section that we rotate our work as we go so it's just making sure that your needle comes through the loop every time that's what gives us our little linked binding stitch Keep your the stitches nice and even because it really shows up on little projects like this. It's very important to keep in the work as neat as you can. It's such a focused little spot. So you can see that that's just making a nice little length and I'm turning my work as I'm working. Or that needle each time comes out. Through the loop. You can see what's happening there. Is that's giving us a lovely little binding edge. It's going to bind all those little edges together right the way around. So I'm going to work right the way around that little circle and then I'm going to do the exactly the same stitch around the entire outside of our little brooch. So there we have our little brooch all finished, stitching all done. You can see that they sit really nicely on a variety of different fabrics. They look just as great with the tweedy wools as they do on brightly colored uh, fabrics, all different colors. I might pop this one on my fedora hat. So a great gift for a, an artist friend Perhaps you could make one. What a great way to pay it forward. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be beaut. In the meantime, make sure that you just subscribe because I've got a few more little brooches coming up for you. Lots of little um, mixed media style patterns coming up. You can see that little one there. 
There'll be quite a few designs, so I hope you look, look forward to those. But for now, from me, it's Huru.